so hello everyone welcome to this uh, new session so in this session we are going to solve one last problem related to root locus so till now we have solved uh, five problems related to root locus okay so this is one last problem and this also a very important problem so please if you some if someone has not watched the previous problem so please watch those things and watch this problem as well please don't skip any part of the video please watch the full video and uh, comment down your opinions about how much you understood this concept okay yeah so this is one last problem that is sketch the root locus of the system whose open loop transfer function is given by k divided by s into s square plus 4s plus 13 okay so this is the question here so according to question let's solve it once one by one step by step let's solve it step by step that is step one is we need to be calculating number of root loci right so the first we need to be knowing how much zeros and poles are there so in this we don't have any zeros the number of poles are s into s square plus 4s plus 13 so one pole is at zero and here is one quadratic equation so we are having total of three poles okay so the poles are s is equal to zero and this equation let's put it in the calculator and find out the coefficients are 1 4 13 1 4 13 and the roots are minus 2 plus 3i and minus 2 minus 3i right so these are the poles here so now let's uh, see here we are obtained a complex pole so that's why again we are we need to be calculating angle of departure in this case also so before that step 2 number of asymptotes is equal to number of poles minus number of zeros right so that's equal to 3 minus 0 3 poles and 0 zeros so that is 3 so we have 3 lines of asymptotes here so that's why we we are going to get 3 angle of asymptotes right that is angle of asymptotes third step asymptotes so the value of q would be ranging from 0, 1, 2 since we have 3 lines of asymptotes so that's why 3 values that is first value 0, 1, 2 so the angle of asymptotes are theta 1 is equal to first value of q 2 into 0 plus 1 into 180 degree divided by 3 p minus z is 3 right so that is 2 into 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1 180 into 1 is 180 divided by 3 so that is equal to 60 degrees so this is the first angle so theta 2 is equal to 2 into the value of q is 1 now 180 degree divided by 3 and that is 2 into 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3 180 into 3 is 540 by 3 so that's equal to 180 degree again so this is the second angle theta 3 is equal to 2 into 2 plus 1 now the value of q is 2 180 degree divided by 3 so 2 2 is 4 4 plus 1 is 5 180 into 5 is 900 degree divided by 3 so 900, 900 by 3 is 300 degree okay so these are the three angle of asymptotes we have found now okay so then the next next step is calculating centroid step 4 centroid right sigma is equal to summation of real part of poles minus summation of real part of zeros divided by p minus z so sigma is equal to real part of poles right minus 2 and minus 2 so that is minus 4 and since we don't have any 0 so that is 0 divided by p minus z that is 3 so that is minus 4 by 3 our sigma value we are getting approximately as minus 1.33 okay so this is the value uh, uh, minus 1.33 so this is the value of sigma okay so now let's uh, calculate the further step that is a uh, breakaway point so now let's calculate that as well so this is the formula for calculate breakaway point that is 1 plus g of s into h of s they are given it as k divided by s into s square plus 4s plus 13 equal to 0 so 1 plus k divided by s cube plus 4s square plus 13s is equal to 0 so our equation is s cube plus 4s square plus 13s plus k equal to 0 so this is the characteristic equation obtained here right so now you need to be computing the value of k separately so that is k 
k is equal to if we bring k to one side so this whole term would be negative that is minus s cube minus 4 s square minus 13 s so now we need to be com computing dk by ds equal to 0 right differentiation of this term with respect to s that is uh, minus s cube is minus 3 s square minus 4 2 is 8 s minus 13 equal to 0 so now for this equation we need to be finding out the roots okay that in the calculator the coefficients are minus 3 minus 8 minus 13 minus 3 minus 8 minus 13 so these are the two roots obtained here that is minus 1.33 plus 1 1.59 i and the second root is minus 1.33 minus 1 1.59 i okay since uh, we have obtained uh, in the two of the two of the roots are also complex so that's why whenever we have we whenever we have a quadratic equation and the roots which we obtained here are both are also complex so whenever we get both roots are also complex we can directly write it as no breakaway point exists okay okay because uh, whenever we get any all the roots whenever we get are complex roots or uh, we don't have any real roots uh, along with that so that's why uh, the no breakaway point would exist in this case because the roots obtained here are also complex and after simplifying for breakaway point again we are obtaining complex roots so whenever we get any complex roots we can directly write it as the breakaway point would be uh, res with respect to would be symmetric to imaginary axis no but breakaway point will not will always be not symmetric to imaginary axis so that's why Whenever we get these kind of problems and we, we get here as complex also here also while I'm sim simplifying we are getting complex so we can directly write it as there is no breakaway point in this case okay so that's why there is no breakaway point so now next step uh, let's uh, first calculate the step number 7 that is a uh, point of intersection after that let's be calculating a uh, angle of departure okay so this is step number 7 the characteristic equation is s cube plus 4 s square plus 13 s plus k equal to 0 right so now for this we need to be constructing the route array s cube s square s power 1 s power 0 okay coefficient of s cube is 1 skip one term coefficient of s is 13 0 4 k 0 so now using these two rows calculate third row elements 13 4 is a 52 minus 1 into k is k 52 minus k by 4 and 0 and uh, 52 minus k by 4 into k minus 4 into 0 divided by this term so numerator denominator side 52 minus k by 4 would be getting cancelled we would be remaining only with this term that is k okay so now k greater than 0 so that's why the above element that is 52 minus k margin divided by 4 would be equal to 0 if you bring this 4 to and multiply with 0 so that's again equal to 0 52 minus k margin equal to 0 so therefore our k margin value we are obtaining it as 52 okay so this is the marginal value of k so now we need to be putting that in the auxiliary equation by computing that equal to 0 above the row of zeros that is 4s square plus k margin equal to 0 4s square plus 52 equal to 0 4s square is equal to minus 52 s square is equal to minus 52 by 4 4 1s are 4 13s are so s square is equal to minus 13 so s is equal to plus or minus square root of minus 13 so again we have minus uh, term inside the square root so s is equal to plus or minus j into square root of minus 13 is square root of 13 is 3.6 okay yeah so here we got one uh, imaginary term as the answer for this so so this is the these are the two point of intersections here that is plus j 3.6 minus j 3.6 okay so this two points we need to be plotting on the graph so now we are left with only one step that is uh, step number six right angle of departure okay so i'll write the formula and keep that is theta d is equal to 180 degree minus summation theta p minus summation theta z okay so now let's uh, try to plot the graph for this and after that we would be calculating the angle of departure also so let's plot the graph 
so this is the rough plot i've drawn it so now let, let's mark the poles and the zeros so yeah we don't have any zeros here so one pole is at origin one pole it is at minus 2 plus 3i right so yeah minus 2 plus 3i so here is one pole okay similarly we have one more pole that is minus 2 minus 3i okay so after that after complex pole we need to join them right so join it with respect to origin right after that there is one centroid here right because uh, we have calculated uh, asymptotes and angle of asymptotes right that centroid is at minus 1.33 so this is minus 1.5 so somewhere here the centroid will be coming sigma okay so now from this centroid we are going to write the angles of uh, asymptotes that is 60 180 degree and 300 degree okay so 60 degree 180 degree is straight like this and 300 degree means from downward 60 degree from here this is 60 degree after that join those angles of asymptotes so here one angle and here one angle okay so this is 60 this is 180 and this whole thing is 300 degree okay so these are the three angles so now we need to be calculating uh, angle of departure right for these two poles so now let's name the poles as uh, pole 1 pole 2 and pole 3 okay so now we need to be calculating uh, angle of departure with respect to pole 2 okay so theta d with respect to p2 okay for that we need to be calculating since we don't have any zeros so this is zero so we need to be calculating only summation theta p okay so for that we need to be calculating theta p1 and theta p3 right so now theta p1 angle made with respect to pole 2 and origin that is we need to be joining these two right and this angle we need to be finding in the protractor keep the protractor here as center and check for the angle whatever obtained so it is approximately equal to 124 or 125 if we check it carefully so it's a, so we can name it as 123 degree okay so yeah that's approximately 123 i have drawn not drawn the line correctly so 123 degree we are obtaining so that's the first angle theta p1 and angle made by theta p3 that is pole 3 with respect to pole 2 and origin we can see that again we have a 90 degree so that is 90 degree here okay so that's why now we need to sum these two up that is 123 plus 90 the answer we are getting it as 213 degree okay so that substitute it here 180 degree minus 213 degree so theta d with respect to p2 is equal to minus 33 degree okay so this is the angle obtained so therefore the mirror image theta d with respect to pt angle p3 angle is 33 degree okay so these two angles we need to be marking at pole 2 and pole 3 now that is one angle is minus 33 right so from here 33 and from here plus 33 okay join them both this is 33 and here this is 33 okay so now also we have the point of intersection right which we have got plus or minus j 3.6 mark that as well so this is plus 3.6 i and here somewhere we are getting minus 3.6 i right so now we need to be drawing the root locus here so this is the angle of departure so it, the pole from this uh, so one pole would be moving towards uh, from this point only it would be moving like this in a straight line since this whole thing is a part of root locus because from infinity if you observe we have only one pole right 
or we can see that we have three poles from infinity observe, if you observe and those three poles are odd number of poles so this whole thing is a part of root locus so that's why since we have only one single pole and also we have an angle of 180 degree we can directly say that one branch is moving like this with respect to real axis it is directly moving towards infinity and from these two poles that is a, it would one branch would be bending it at an angle of 33 degree and it would be touching and 33 degree angle of departure and angle of arrival to the point of intersection it would be bending it to an angle of 60 degree and it would be touching this uh, point of intersection okay same thing here 33 degree it would be bending first and I and again it would be moving towards 3.65 3 point minus 3.6 at an angle of 3 300 degree and it would be touching here like this okay and it would be approaching towards infinity okay so this is the plot for the, the last problem okay so please note it down a very very important question so with this we have completed uh, this module and this topic of root locus hope you understood all the concepts very thoroughly i again repeat this concept of root locus is very important i've solved six problems all six problems are of different kind so please please observe all of the six videos separately for each video i've solved one single problem so that you people would understand the concept thoroughly so please refer the videos those who have not referred please ask your friends neighbors anybody please tell them to refer these videos and comment down their opinions about how they like these videos about root locus okay this concept is very important so that's why i'm stretching it again and again again please like share subscribe if you like this video comment down your opinion and hit a like for us the efforts which we take is uh, unimaginable okay that also during exam times so it's very difficult for me as well to record the videos and give it to you all but still i'm doing it because you guys should be understanding this concept so please like share subscribe and also you can refer a playlist for further videos of other modules of this control system as well as other subjects that is electromagnetic theory pcs microcontrollers everything we are doing in a channel so please refer our playlists as well it might be appearing on the right of your screen now please refer all the playlists so that's all thank you